On the final day of 2022, we're focusing on some trade talk from around the league. Today, we're looking at the Boston Bruins, the St. Louis Blues, and the Detroit Red Wings. Plus, we also have some key injury updates, including Leon Dreisaitl and Edmonton might be out for a while. We actually have a Carey Price update as well. Some updates from the World Junior Championships. A rumor around a potential contract extension for David Pasternak. All that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of initial news and some trade talk to take a look at today. On the final day of 2022, it is New Year's Eve, so I certainly want to take a moment. Wish everybody a happy new year. Thank you for all your support during 2022. Uh, we've seen a lot of great growth through the channel throughout the, throughout the year, throughout the entire season, and it's certainly great to see. And I certainly look forward to 2023 and all that it brings and hope that we can continue everything that we've built upon here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, there's a pretty big rumor about a potential contract extension between the Boston Bruins and David Pasternak. Now, nothing has been announced as of yet, but there are some reporters saying that they're hearing that the Bruins and Pasternak might be close enough that you could almost, and maybe not the word imminent, but close. So I'm not sure exactly if this is going to happen or exactly when it will be announced, um, but there's speculation that it could be an eight-year deal worth around $88 million. So that's certainly a big chunk of change, but I think it's fair to say that Pasternak is well worth it. One of the game's uh, you know premier goal scorers, uh, still young, of course. It could be that you know he's been part of this core for a while. He came into the league with a, you know, a, a dominant play pretty early in his career, uh, and he will be there long past some of the older veterans that are nearing the end of their careers, like your Krejci's and your Bergeron's, etc. So certainly, I think it's important for Boston to lock this guy up. He's certainly a big part of the future, and uh, we'll see if that contract extension rumor comes to be. The numbers may be off a little bit, hard to say, but I think eighty-eight million dollars over eight years is. Certainly worth it, and a lot of people thought he would get something around, but McAvoy got maybe more, hard to say. So uh, it's kind of in that ballpark, so we'll have to see um, you know, where things go. Uh, another couple of accomplishments here as well. Uh, Josh Morrissey, the Winnipeg Jets, the first defenseman in 30 years to have 36 assists in his first 36 games of the season. So that's not something you see. I know um, another defenseman like Eric Carlson certainly on fire as well, putting up tons of points, getting lots of goals. Uh, some of the defensemen and the offensive numbers we're seeing out of a few of these guys are certainly something that we haven't seen in a while. I mean, I know Roman Yossi last year had an incredible season, but it's becoming more and more common, some of these guys putting up these kind of numbers. So it's nice to see the NHL trending and certainly in a much more offensive uh, you know, offensive goal scoring type of league. Not quite to the point it was in the 80s, but it's certainly trending closer to that than we've ever seen in a really, really really long time. Uh, Nathan McKinnon makes his triumphant return tonight. He's been activated by the Avalanche and will be in the lineup tonight as they face the Toronto Maple Leafs. Certainly, uh, you know, a big uh, addition for the Avalanche who have done with so much adversity this year, so many injuries. It's insane the fact that they're still hanging around being in the playoff conversation. If they can get some healthy bodies back and stay healthy for the second half of the season, I would say they will be a team to watch out for to make a move and work their way up the standings. Uh, we certainly had lots of action at the World Juniors, of course, between yesterday and today. Uh, yesterday, we only had two games of action, seeing the, the Slovakian team defeat Latvia 3-0, and the German team beat Austria 4-2. So certainly, uh, you know, the last couple of games there, uh, before the big day today, of course, New Year's Eve, they always leave a lot of key matchups. Earlier today, we saw Switzerland defeat Slovakia 4-3. to That went to overtime, not, didn't solve it. They went to a shootout, and even then the traditional shootout had to go to the eighth round before they had a winner. And so Switzerland has won uh, numerous games now in extra time. They could only get their wins in regulation and have even more points and might have had a shot at finishing first in their group. But unfortunately, uh, they still had a good tournament, though. Uh, we'll see where everything stacks up here. Uh, the U.S. were... Um, leading Finland when I started to uh, record this video, the game is now just finishing uh, and it should be uh, a victory for Team USA. So the U.S. team will finish in first place uh, in their group. Czechia also a big win earlier today with an 8-1 to win over Germany. Uh, Canada is playing Sweden in the final game of the evening uh, right now. At the first intermission, it's a 3-1 to Canada lead. So if Canada wins, they'll be second in their group. 
Um, of course, if Sweden wins, they'll be first. So, but the best Canada can do after dropping an opening game uh, will be a second place finish. But if they can win this one, they'll win three straight. And certainly playing a lot more like the team that many of us thought we would see at this tournament. Now, a big other, uh, now back to NHL injury news for a second. The uh, Edmonton Oilers forward and uh, one of the top players in the league, Leon Dreisaitl, uh missed last night's game. It's not something that he does very often. We saw him last year, even in the playoffs, with a high ankle sprain, not really miss a whole lot of time and really battle through a pretty, you know, tough injury to play through. But he managed to do it pretty much on one leg through a big stretch of the playoffs, still putting up tons of points. He figured out how to be effective. But now Leon is dealing with what they call a core muscle strain. Um, tonight, I, I believe he's kind of listed as day-to-day -day right now. They don't know what this is going to be, but just the fact of what the type of injury is, it could be something that's uh, uh, you know keeps him out for a bit of time for sure. So that's certainly concerning news. Uh, of course, the Edmonton Oilers have had an up and down regular season so far. Uh, they really can't afford for Leon or McDavid to be out for any length of time. Um, so that's certainly going to be something that we're going to want to keep a close eye on because that could be a major, major impact for the Oilers if Leon misses any kind of extensive time. Uh, one update on Carey Price. It's really nothing too substantial, but I know there's a lot of people out there wondering, is it really over? Will he, you know, maybe come back next year? And an uh, Instagram post from his wife, Angela, kind of solidifies the fact that it's pretty unlikely and just kind of, you know, hammers home that it's 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 over, I guess you could say. Angela posts on Instagram uh, taking questions from fans that uh, he says that they, she says that there's uh, uh, the family is moving back west this summer. So they're, they're being asked if they're going to stay in Montreal or what the plans were for the family. And because of both of their families being Western um, Western families, of course, Kira Price family in uh, Lower BC, and of course, uh, Angela's family from like the Seattle area up in that area of the um, northwestern part of the United States, then certainly, you know, it makes sense if they want to be near family to go there, which is why a lot of the speculation was when they were in the expansion draft when Kerry Price made himself available, uh, waiving his no-move clause, a lot of people thought, well, you know what, maybe he'd be okay playing there because it would be really close to family. And he's never said that publicly, but I know a lot of people thought that and it did kind of make sense. Um, but the fact that it's been so long now since Price has played, he has not come out explicitly and said, I will never play hockey again. We kind of get that more of that message with Shea Weber, uh, you know, not long after he was done. But Price is, is, or his medical team or the team themselves has not said that. But the fact that what, they've, what they have said, they said it's pretty unlikely. Uh, you know, Price has gone over the extent of his knee injury and all that. And now the fact that they're not even going to be living in Montreal kind of, you know, finishes things off in my opinion. But yeah, some people, I guess, were pretty curious. I know a lot of people, a lot of fans still speculate if he could come back. And to me, that kind of uh, nails it down that he's not going to. But we'll see if it ever happens. Uh, on to the trade section of the day. I want to start with the Detroit Red Wings. The, the Red Wings might be in the market to move a goaltender. Of course, not a while back, they picked up uh, Magnus Helberg on waivers, uh, which has turned out to be a good move. He's played well for them. He's given them an opportunity. Uh, they've leaned heavily, of course, on Billy Huso as well, who they picked up from the St. Louis Blues in the offseason. But a goalie who hasn't played a lot because of those two guys doing well is, uh, of course, Nedeljkovic. Uh, uh, Nedeljkovic could be the odd man out. Now, of course, they, they may not want to move Nedeljkovic that quickly. They may want a bigger sample size from Helberg. But here's the thing is they're going to need a roster spot. Now, I don't know if they really want to take the chance to put Helberg through waivers. Every time he's been put through, he's been picked up, and he's been playing well. So I think that just pretty much solidifies the fact he'd be picked up yet again. But the fact is they're going to have guys like Fabry and Zadina uh, returning off injury soon. And Jacob Varane, of course, is in the minors right now doing his conditioning stint after returning from the player assistance program. So it won't be too long before he's back, too. They're going to need roster spots. They really, to me, I don't know if they can really justify carrying three goaltenders. Um, so we'll be interested to see what they do in that respect. And Delkovich is still, I think, a talented young goaltender that teams would certainly be very interested in. Um, I don't know that they really want to trade Helberg, but at the same time, it just makes you wonder how that's going to work, right? I mean, it's just an interesting three-headed scenario that doesn't seem to work well long-term. And when you get players coming back and you need roster spots, something's got to give. So take a look for the Red Wings to maybe be active in the goalie market in the uh, not-too-distant future here as these players 
get ready to return. Uh, Pierre Lebron, of course, has been a longtime NHL insider, well connected. Uh, talking recently about a couple of UFAs in St. Louis, Ryan O'Reilly and Vladimir Tarasenko. Both pretty high-profile players. Uh, we've talked about them before. Uh, of course, in the rumor mill, lots of speculation of what their futures will hold, where their futures will be. Will it be in St. Louis? Will it be elsewhere? Well, according to LeBron, he says there's basically no chance of Tarasenko re-signing in St. Louis, this is what, which has been my opinion this whole time. I've said myself, uh, the fact that he requested a trade almost two years ago, it's never happened. Uh, last offseason was interesting, of course. Uh, the last, really, really, ever since the expansion draft, uh, when they made him available, they tried to move him to protect other players. And it just, uh, you know, it's been, uh, the writing's been on the wall there for some time. I figured he would uh, finish up the contract if necessary, but I don't see him re signing in St. Louis. It just doesn't make sense. And with given where the team is at, the team's probably going to prefer to want some cap flexibility. And if they can get some assets in return for Tarasenko or O'Reilly, that makes a ton of sense to move to the deadline. I mean, St. Louis is not a given at this point to miss the playoffs. They're still in the mix, but they're having a tough time having any kind of consistency to get themselves in a real good spot. Um, so we know that uh, Doug Armstrong is not afraid to be aggressive. And if his team is, you know, not, you know, a top team in the conference, that it's not unlikely or unusual for him to pull the trigger on a significant move. Uh, so LeBron also says O'Reilly, he feels, feels, that the chances of a trade are much higher than seeing a contract extension worked out with their captain. They seem, they seem to part ways with their captain every so many years here. I mean, looking back to Petrangelo, David Backus, I guess it just seems to be a trend with this team. Um, but regardless of that, we know that Armstrong is not afraid to move on from the most important players on the team, but that he has to feel that the deal makes sense and is right for the club in the future of the club. And of course, that may not be the case. With these guys, of course, they've been key members of the Stanley Cup Championship a few years ago. They've had a lot of contributions during their time there, but at the same time, they're getting a little bit older, and the fact that they might be able to get some decent trade returns on these guys bodes well for trades to happen at the deadline as we get closer to the end of the year, you know, around the end of February, 1st of March, before that deadline kicks in. So as far as teams, I mean, we've heard before, but the Leafs have an interest in O'Reilly. Uh, I'm sure they're not going to be the only ones. I think the Avalanche are looking for a two, a number two center. So, you know, guys like Horvat, O'Reilly, Jonathan Taze will all be players that they take a look at as well. Tarasenko could be interesting to a variety of teams. Um, we'll have to see who might be in the mix there. But looking around, like there's lots of teams that are going to want to add. And I think, you know, a healthy Tarasenko will be interesting. There won't be any shortage of interest. So we'll see where these guys end up. But according to Pierre Lebrun, that pretty much time is ticking on their time as being members of the St. Louis Blues. Now, the Boston Bruins as well, we talked yesterday about uh, the possibility of them uh, acquiring Bo Horvat from Vancouver, and that might be a player that they obviously, it makes a lot of sense that they would have interest in, but the price tag might prove to be too difficult for them to pull it off. As That was my concern in yesterday's video, saying that, yes, based on the rumors that there's been some interest, I just don't know that they're going to put together a package that Vancouver's really going to want. So another player that uh, NHL reporters are talking about that the Bruins reportedly have interest in is Ham centerman Sean Monaghan, who has uh, had a good comeback season but has been out injured for a little while. He should be returning soon. I think a lot of teams like Boston and others will be watching him closely to see how he plays and if he can continue playing like he did in the early part of the year when he first bounced back and was showing strong play. Then we might see... Uh, you know, some more intriguing conversations take place to make a move here. Now, uh, I wouldn't completely rule out the possibility of Montreal re-signing Monaghan, but at this point, I think they're probably going to be trying to shed as many veteran contracts as they can to trim down their roster, create some cap flexibility, and see what happens. I know the Hams had a decent start to the season, but we've seen a much more team that we thought we'd expect to see more recently as they worked their way down the standings. I do see Montreal being a lottery team. Uh, you know, they started today to, to kick off this road trip. At the, they're doing a mother's trip, and they had an absolute thrashing in Washington with a 9-2 to two loss. Uh, they left Jake Allen on the net for all nine goals against. Not a good way to start the mom's trip at all. Uh, it just seemed like there isn't much fight left in this team. So I do wonder, as this season goes on, the losing is going to take its toll on them. And I think we're going to see more veteran guys moved out. And I think, uh, you know, 
it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. I know earlier on, a lot of people thought the Habs might not, even though they may not be a playoff team, they might be, you know, more like a middle of the pack team, um, you know, uh, near the bottom of the lottery standing, so to speak. But now they're working their way down to compete with some of these lottery teams. They may not get a first overall pick, but I tell you, when you're playing the way they have been lately, you start thinking about the possibility of getting Connor Bedard. It sounds pretty intriguing, but we'll see where things go. Either way, Sean Monaghan and many other veteran players in Montreal more likely to be moved if there's a market for them before the deadline. Some will end up walking away as UFAs at the end of the year if they can't find trades for those expiring deals. So let me know your thoughts. Again, Happy New Year to everybody. I hope you have a safe and fun New Year's Eve. We'll see you tomorrow on January the 1st to kick off. 2023 here at Top Shelf Hockey. Of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.